planning board meeting to order. And members of the planning board in attendance are Joseph Grodnick, Jim Maximoski, Bill Dwyer, and I don't see um, Mark Dunn there yet. Mark is not here yet. Okay. Um, first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. First entry was Jeffrey Casey. Jeff? Yep. Is, uh, yeah, Tom's here. Tom Reedy so is gonna, there too. Yep. I'm going to turn it over to Tom Reedy. We're just Perfect. here to talk about temporary signage for the Subaru location on Russell Street. Perfect. Thanks. So I, I had sent this uh, to you folks on Friday. We were here two weeks ago to talk about the temporary Subaru signage at 299 Russell Street. And we had talked about uh, the 315 Russell Street um, property and wanting to provide appropriate signage so that folks knew uh, not to stop into that location because it's under construction. So I've got that. I'll, I'll share my screen in a moment so you can see what we're proposing. And then just one minor change uh to the what was approved last time for the the showroom entrance sign so let me i will start with the signage and uh, this is to go on the the 305 russell street site there's that existing sign out there it's just to reface that sign um this sign will ultimately come down once the new dealership is is constructed but until that point, we've just got to sign uh, exactly in the same dimensions that exists. Uh, one of the sides says turn around, the other one says just to head on your left with the, the left turn there. So uh, simple and no illuminations proposed for this one. Those are both going at 305, Tom? Yeah, exactly. There's an existing, it's the old rail sign that's out front and this is just going there. Okay. And then I'll just show you the only other change to what was approved before. Um, I'll show you what was approved. So if you recall, we had uh, you know the existing overhang had nothing on it. We were going to put showroom entrance there, but since have changed our minds and are going to put the showroom sign just underneath the Subaru. This Subaru, as you recall, is just refacing the TJ's uh, True Value Rental. Showroom will go under it. Showroom is not going to be illuminated. Remind me of the uh, street address here. This one's 299 Russell Street. And so instead of having it on that canopy overhang, it's just going to be on the side of the building, which we think will be better for customers. Only problem is you exceed 64 square feet with that, with that showroom sign, Tom. Our approach was showroom service entrance were directional. Um, and so that's how, that's how we calculated these. Because the Subaru already exists and it's already four by 18. And so we thought we could put the seven by two, you know, 14 square foot sign and some change underneath it. I don't know. As what a directional feel sign. about that? Okay. Uh, if it's going to be temporary, uh, temporary meaning how long? I think you guys gave us a year. Mr. Dwyer said it last time, and I don't have those notes in front of me, but I want to say it was like September, Bill. I think we said October, first meeting October. of October. Probably about right of next year. Okay. Comments? Hearing none? One other quick thing. Sorry, Tom. We also had the uh, freestanding sign out front. We're just looking to keep the oh, same nice. size. But in, we had, it said Steve Lewis with an arrow before. And now we're just looking to use the, the logo so it matches better with that sign that's down at 305. So it's easier for customers to identify. Do you have that? or? Yeah, I should. I don't know why it didn't come up. Let me find that. And I, you know, going back to the showroom sign, it's not, it's, there's no branding. It, it, it does, that does lend itself towards the argument that it's directional. Right. Let me. Yeah, well, Tom looks for that. Part of the reason we we're looking to make that change was because it, it is two separate buildings. So we thought the, the small lettering on the front that we had proposed before wasn't going to be enough to help customers find that. 
portion. All right. Let me share. Can you see the Steve Lewis sign? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's the one going on the, uh, what you call 299. it? 299. 299, okay. Yeah, it had said temporary before, and then I think what, what Jeff was just saying is uh, calling out Steve Lewis Subaru. Actually, Tom, it, so that's the one that was approved, I believe. And then the new one was just the Steve Lewis Subaru logo. Uh, really that's the one I opened from the email, so let me... Well, look at everybody's time I'm taking now. Sorry right. about this. Do you want, is it possible for me to share it? Is that? Yeah, I mean, if you, you can certainly share it. Okay. All right. Oh, just have to figure out how to zoom out here. You see a blank screen. Yep, sorry. There we go. A lot of blue. Yep. Can everyone see that okay now? No, no we see a blank blue oh, screen. It's all, blue. it's all blue. It's all blue. All right. Pretty sign, but it's all blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's no branding there either. <laughs> so I have zoomed it out on mine. I don't know why it's not displaying correctly. Maybe unshare and reshare once you get it okay. to where you want it to go. Good idea. How about that? That's better. Yes. There you go. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so yeah, this would be the same size, the four by eight that we had proposed before. So 32 square feet in the same location. This just matches up with the imagery on the our temporary the signage at the uh, old location. So we're trying to make it more uniform so that customers can identify where we want them to go. Okay. So, so how many signs are we will replace the sign that Tom just posted? Correct. With the arrow on it. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Is there a plan that kind of indicates all these signs A, B, C, D, all the I can probably bring up a GI the GIS to show you. It's the same number of so there's 299 Russell Street has the same number of signs that we showed last time. Uh and then the only additional sign is that one sign from um 305 Russell Street. So let me get to a overhead view. 305 is where the new that's 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 the construction site. Correct. Yes. So let me share my screen. All right. So we talked about one sign that exists. It's the freestanding sign here. That's that uh, turn around. You've gone too far sign uh, or, you know, coming up on your left sign. So that's where it is. Let me just not make anybody nauseous. So that's there. And then this is 299 Russell. There's one freestanding sign here that Jeff just showed you. There is an existing sign on the side of the building here. Uh, that's the true value sign. Underneath that is going to say showroom. And then on this building, it's going to say service entrance. So there's one, two, three, four here on 299. And then there's one here. It's an existing sign just being resurfaced. Could, could you send us those signs in one email, Tom? Sure. Just to make it easier when I put the waiver, I, I don't want to, I want to make sure I send the right one to the building inspector and I want to send, I send them out. Absolutely. Those are the signs, temporary in all cases. Any comments or questions? 
Hearing none. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the 305 Russell sign and to approve revisions, the 299 signage. Do you want to second that, Dr. Zagrodnik? I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to do it since I missed the first three minutes of the. All right. I'll second it. Motion second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Done. Aye. Dwyer, aye. Maximoski, aye. Zagrodnik, aye. Motion passes 4 0, unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You hear for anything else, Tom? I guess not. Yeah, just uh, later on to talk about uh, over 55, but okay. nothing else right now. Uh, Jim Carlin was next in. Mr. Carlin, you're up. He's grabbing a cold one. Are you here for anything or just for information? Okay, well then uh, we can move on to Lynn Stewart. Good evening. Hello. So uh, I'm sure my video will load in one second, but what we're proposing, and can everybody hear me all right? I'm using the computer, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So what we're proposing is EV charging stations at 165 Russell Road. Uh, they're going to be two d direct current fast chargers up in the northwestern corner of the parking lot. The issue that Mr. Dwyer and the board had brought to my attention is the to make sure that you guys still had enough parking space for everyone else with these charging stations. If you'll give me one second, I can show you a site map of that. One sixty-five. Yeah, what's the business, Lynn? I'm sorry. What was that? The, 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 the climbing oh, gym. Central Rock. Central Rock Gym. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. <clears throat> Kind of small scale down in the corner. Yeah, we need a we need a much better picture than that. Give us one second, please, sir. I'm scrolling down. My computer's just running a little slower than I would like. That's better. There we go. So as I said, uh, I'd be on the northwestern corner right here, uh, facing Russell Street. The, our trenching will be going to a pole right at the edge, and we'll also be working from this transformer as well. So we have a wire run about 110 feet underground with a two by two trench. So two feet deep and two feet wide at the at the most. And that's typically what we do for trenching. And like I mentioned that you there was concerns about the parking space. As you can see here, the Central Rock Gym encompasses both these parcels as far as parking. Square footage wise, what are we talking? We don't care about a, a look, a vision. Square uh, footage. Less than 25 square feet. No, no. At least two. Out of a van, you have so much parking on the total site. And what is required versus what will be remainder after you do the, this calculation wise? Give me one second to bring up my calculations. I could do that for you. Gotta... And is this going to be rock gym charging or is this a brand like? Uh... Oh, no, this is going to be under the Linkwell brand. That's our company. <clears throat> so there will be signage? Uh, yes, uh, there we will be to, signage for it. We need to see your signage. Yes, sir. One moment, please.
Give me one second, sir. I, sir and gentlemen, I apologize. My computer is running a little on the slow side. So the signage will be similar to this with the DCFC unit. Have a baller in front with that right there. That'll be the only signage? Uh, yes, sir, unless you re require more. No, we don't require more. <laughs> the less, the better. Okay, perfect. We try to be as minimalistic as possible. Um, understand that the unit itself will be bigger than this one. This is our L2. It'll, and by bigger, I mean it'll be slightly taller. So it's one unit with two charge cables. Correct. Okay. And I can show you the specs on those if you'll give me one moment. So the proposal is for two of these. So there'll be four charging stations, four charging sites. Yes, sir. Okay. They're uh, what we call ports. So yes, four cars ideally should be able, unless uh, somebody decides to park extra special, should be able to charge. And so there will be two signs at whatever that is, 12 by 18 or something. Correct. I think we can call those directional signs. I was going to yep. say they, they, they seem pretty minor and I would, I would agree with that one. And the, and the, yeah, the text is so small, you couldn't possibly read it as you drive by on Route 9. If they do, you might have a superhero among you. <laughs> Oh, and it'll be facing into the parking lot. So, exactly. correct. Mm -hmm. uh, did you guys need any further uh, looking at the specs of the charger itself? No, or... that's fine. What you showed okay, us. Perfect. Right. Thank you. So, just and need thank your you for your patience. Just need your parking calculations. Uh, yes. One moment, please. So the parking calcul calculations um, from the gym's floor space is currently 11,475 feet. The parking available is 32,661 feet. Um, the two DCFC chargers, and I was a little generous on this, um, was take up about 276 square feet. Okay leaving 31,884. Okay. So it has roughly three to one parking. Yeah. What yep. was the current parking allotment? Uh, the current that we have is 32,661. Yeah. And you, you will use how much? 276 square feet. Two hundred seventy six point nine three. if you want to get super technical. Okay. Well, if we're going to be super technical, all of that is probably blacktop that you're quoting in uh, driveways don't count, but nevertheless, that's being super technical. Okay. I didn't include the driveway in my, those calculations. I only included the actual parking space. Well, that's excellent. But that's good to know. Thank you for future. Yeah. Any comments or questions on the proposal? No. Hearing none. Make a motion to waive further site plan approval for installation of two dual chargers. I'll second it. Motion second. <clears throat> Discussions? Gary Nunn, roll call vote. Dunn, aye. Dwyer, aye. Maximoski, aye. Zagrodnik, aye. 
Motion passes four to zero. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and th thank you for your patience. <laughs> Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Uh, next in, we had Randy's iPad. I'm just I'm just here to watch for the most part. Uh, Jimmy, are you around in the next couple of days to sign a plan that you guys approved a couple of months ago? Yes, I am. All right, I'll get a hold of you tomorrow. Okay. Otherwise, I'm just here for the entertainment factor. Okay. Low night at the Iser. Yeah. Mr. Carlin, you blinked a second ago. Do you have something to say or just here for information? No. Can you guys hear me? I just didn't know how to work my phone. Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Oh, so I'm I'm here for 237 Russell Street. Okay. Uh, do you guys have plans in front of you for town place suites that I emailed in? I uh, don't have them in front of us, no. Town place suites? Yeah, by Marriott. It, it used to be... Uh... Yeah, that's my project. Yeah, it's a new hotel there. Let me see yeah. if I can... Uh... Oh. It, it, it came in a, a while back, right? Yeah. Okay. Like a month ago, I just missed it by like a week. I, I just don't, I don't know how to share like pictures like those guys were doing and all that. Uh, uh, okay, I have uh email from you on August 19th. And let me see if I can bring it up. I have it right in front of me. How would I share it? Well, you, you need to have it electronically to. Oh. So let's see. That looks like it. Yep. And so what, uh, okay, let me uh, see if I can rotate this. Jim, this is for the signs, right? Yes, for uh, okay. one, one 25 square foot monument sign and one building sign. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted to do. You're doing better than I am. Rotate pages. Clockwise 90 degrees. All. Hmm. Okay. So what do you want to talk about first? Uh, maybe the monument out by the street. It says uh, EO2. Okay. Let me see if I can find that. Is there, there, I was going to say, is there another site plan that has the street? Because that goes to the property line. It doesn't really show the street line. No, I don't. Because the, the street was like, all being torn up and yeah. okay that is in from the street probably oh, oh. It's a good oh. good bit because they have the they have the what's it called the sidewalk there now yeah and the setback too it's yeah. probably yeah. over 10 feet from the sidewalk So this is a lot smaller sign that was originally there, probably by half. I think the original one was like a six by eight, which was 48 square feet. Okay. 
Okay. Externally illuminated? Uh, internally, like the original one. Not allowed. I. So, from Jim, from my understanding, is that sign was removed because of DOT, and we had talked about it at a certain point that it was going to be grandfathered in um, when Balthazar did the whole Route 9 construction. Because otherwise, we would have kept it. Correct. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. they're the ones who removed their yeah, sign. Do you have any photos of the uh, <clears throat> original sign? The original sign? Um, let me see if I can find one. It'd probably show up on Google Street. Yeah, that's exactly where I was heading. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going. To. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Roadway in. Yeah. That was a turn that was internally eliminated. So I'm not sure if you want to share my screen. I have it up. Before that, it was comforting. It was a lot of things. So <clears throat> hang on. I have to stop sharing. Now you can share. All right. Hold on one second. Can you see it? Not yet. Here we go. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I, I remember the discussion. Yeah, and it, it, that was there until up until you started construction. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. You want to stop? I'll bring up the original. Will do. Okay. So we move on to the, is that the next one you want to talk about? The building sign? Yeah, the building sign. It's uh that is 37 square feet. Those letters are about a foot tall and expands about 16 feet. So it's uh, about 27 inches to 16 feet wide. Also internally illuminated. About it's 30, can't read that. 36.8 square feet, so 37 square feet. I guess the question there is how much, how big was the previously internally illuminated sign? Well, I could look that up at work. I can't look that up right now. Um, Yeah, I think we're okay agreeing to, on a grandfather basis, no larger than what was there. Yep. But if you're expanding beyond what was there, and it does seem larger than what we just saw on the building, we would want to know. Yeah, we could go back and take a look at that, Jim, in this get a um get that but for but for the road the street sign where that should be 
good, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, the, the roadside sign is good. Okay. I, I can go back in my files because I think I produced the roadway sign for the building. I think there's actually two signs on the building. There was a logo and there was also the letters. Okay. They were in separate spots. There was one, I think, if you going under the canopy you drove under, was there a canopy there? Yeah, there was. Um, I think that was a logo sign. And then there was one that said roadway in. Correct. And then there was a conference room sign that was, I think you got to check on that. I think that was externally illuminated. Yep. So unless there's a time pressure here, I think I'd rather just do one vote on both proposals. But I think we're in agreement on the road side, the pylon sign. When's the next meeting? Is it two, two weeks? weeks? Two weeks, yeah. We could produce that for that. Okay. 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 See you in two weeks then. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, we have Tony C U B R Cuber. Cuber. Uh, believe it or not, it's Chuber. Nothing like it looks. Chuber. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, Tony Chuber, my son and Matthew and I are. Um, looking into uh, or working towards opening a Jersey Mike's um, store in Hadley. Um, he unfortunately had a conflict tonight, so he couldn't join. Um, I, I'm actually in Michigan, so if you have any questions about the location, uh, I'm going to need some help with Google Maps and, and that kind of stuff. But um, I think the question was for the change of use that the current location is a Sport Clips, and we have a signed lease. And the landlord is presenting them the uh, the option that that they need to be out, I believe, by October first. So one of the questions for the change of use was signage, and uh, we provided a rendering for the that we obtained from Jersey Mike's. Do you want me to share that, Bill? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right, forgive me. I'm not real efficient on Zoom. Give me a second here. Oh, man. I'm used to, to Google Teams, so I apologize. Or... Uh... Microsoft Teams, so I apologize. All right. Is that coming in yet? Oh, no, hang on. All right. So this is the rendering we 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 receive from from our corporate office. It's a pretty standard signage for for Jersey Mike's um, used pretty much in every every location, um, and and that's that's what we receive. So we're looking for approval to to uh, use that. It will be a will will be a uh, an internally lit sign um, on the store. Um, this particular one uh, we chose, th there were two options. This particular one we chose to be consistent with the other uh, stores in the area. 
uh, sort of the, the horizontal kind of one in, in doing that. So, um, so we're just seeking approval for that. What's the address? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh, it it's the uh, it, it, uh, I think we can just I, say I don't, Mountain I'm, Farms I'm in Michigan. Wall. I, I'm in Michigan. My son is out in in Massachusetts, so I don't know. Um, it's uh, it's the location. There's a Five Guys. There's a Sports Clips. Um, there's some other locations. I, I can look that up. Let me let me find that for you. Uh, we can oh. we can. Just say Mountain Farms Mall. Yeah. That's it. That's exactly it. Yes, you're correct. Until yep. we're by 110 Grill. Yeah, I think it might be 355C Russell Street. Yeah, it, it's 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 That's the current. Is it, is yeah, it in, it's the current sport clips, correct. Yeah. Is, it in, yeah. is it in that little strip mall in front? Yes. Yes. Who are you replacing? Sport clips. Sport clips. Pardon? It, cannot, it cannot be internally illuminated. No? No. Okay. That, that, that particular strip mall was not allowed to be internally illuminated. It was built after the um, sign laws went into a, the sign laws were, were, changed, were amended, and no sign on that building should be internally illuminated. Okay. It totally can be backlit, but it can totally be internally can you, illuminated. Can you take us out of your email and back to the rendering, please? Oh, sorry about that. Oh, I hate Zoom. I just close it. Sometimes you, it just helps to stop sharing and then reshare. All right, there we go. All right, let me open that back up again. Okay, what's the difference between internally lit and backlit? Backlit. You know what I'm asking? I, 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 I'm an engineer, so I, I don't understand all these terms. means so. it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a solid letter, and the light doesn't come through it. It's more like a, a halo. The, letter, the letters are opaque, and you can't see through them, and it's the, the lighting is behind the letters, so it, it, it appears a bit like it's internally illuminated, but it's not, and the sign is like a glow in the back of the letters. Okay. The light is a glow behind the letters. So and the the letters letters cannot, and I, and I, okay, I, I, I believe that's that's what what it is, but um, I, I will verify that. So, um, here, let me get you to that rendering again. I'm very IT challenged today. I apologize. <clears throat> Come on, I just opened that. All right, we'll try that again. There we go. Yes. Okay, next question is, how big is this? Because there's no uh, reference. To the location? No, to oh, the sign. the sign. How big is the sign? Uh, there are options. I think there are options for the sign. Um, Based on, I, I think what the the ex we we're we're still working through uh, getting with a contractor and working through the landlord and trying to understand what their requirements are um, to try and figure that out. We just kind of wanted to have, uh, you, you know, get get the approval for the signage and that. So it, the landlord has some stipulations on on signage. Um, I know the five guys next to us have have a pretty pretty big sign. Um, so uh, if this is something we need to to bring into you, I can I, we, I can make sure we get that. Yeah. The contractor is is just we just signed the lease, so 
contractor is just finally on board with us right now. So, um, and and uh, and we need to work with the, if we need to work with the landlord on that, we can do that. Yeah. So for for a multi tenant building, your uh, sign allowance is forty eight square feet. So if that's a four by twelve sign, you'd be okay, as long as it's not internally illuminated. Okay. So then the other options that we have seen mostly are externally illuminated, which means that there's a light that shines on, yeah. like, like, for example, a gooseneck or the, you know, backlit. I, 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 I didn't really understand the difference between internal and backlit. So I, I think we want to go with backlit if we can. I, that's pretty standard of, of the locations that I've, I've seen before. The sign is is illuminated, but not not garish, you know. So it's um, it, it it it's it's obvious, but not in your face. And that so backlit tends to. I mean, I I don't want to over speak, but tends to be individual letters. I'm not sure it would lend itself to that partial black circle background. Okay, we'll 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 take that. Yeah, we'll we'll follow up on that. Okay. But the magic number is 48 square feet. And so okay. are you replacing the uh, the barbershop? Yes. Yeah, I believe they, uh, I, I believe the uh, landlord is exercising the, the, the clause by October 1st. So that hopefully will be when we're able to start. Um, it, it, hopefully we've obtain, obtained the change of use by then and we can start working with the contractor on that. So what we can do is we can't approve your signage, but we can vote to approve change of use. Re a restaurant is an allowed use in the district. Um, okay. So I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for change of use from sports clip to Jersey Mike's. Okay. And before we before we do any signage, we'll need to uh, come back and get this approved. And hopefully we can bring that back in two weeks. Is that reasonable? Yep. I will okay. second the motion that's on the floor. Is that a second? That was me. Okay. So we'll need we'll need dimensions on the sign, then the signage, and following up Tony, on. Uh, I'm sorry. You might just want to hold on a second because we're in the midst of voting on your. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. On your use. Okay. You right. have a motion. Sorry about that. Yep. You have a motion and a second. Any yes. other discussions? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion to waive site plan approval for change of use. Done. I. Dwyer. I. Maximoski. I. Lagrodnik. I. Motion passes four to zero. Approved. Thank you. And uh, so yeah, there's we need sign dimensions and what the sign is actually going to be made of. Yeah. Typically, we get a little detailed construction section that shows so that we can see where the light is, what kind of sign material it is. Okay. Okay. We'll work yes. on that. We'll bring that back in two weeks. Just a second. I want to make sure. Mr. Dwyer said 48 square feet. I'm not. I'm thinking. Is it is it forty square feet? Bill? I thought it was forty. No, forty. Yes. I could be forty square feet. Okay. Okay. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want you to go away with the wrong information. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. I fell into trusting Mr. Dwyer. <laughs> if you can look it up, please do. It's. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That, no. That sounds good. We'll we'll uh, we'll come back in two weeks with our uh, with our proposal then. So thank you everybody. I appreciate your help. Yep. All right. Who's going to stop sharing?
I will stop sharing. Okay. Very good. See you in two weeks. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Okay, and I believe that is it for general information. That uh, that is. Um, we do have uh, some of the people who have expressed interest in joining the board with us. Um, but I think um, just to get the full flavor of how much fun we have every other Tuesday night, we should move ahead to um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and. Right. Uh, talk through that and then we can take up uh, replacement options. Okay. Mr. Kyle, you're up. Good evening. Good evening. Do you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, good to see everybody. Happy September. Surprise. Uh, on the agenda, we have a few items I think we can breeze through. Um, uh, regarding the planning board rules and regs, the remaining task is uh, the next item on the agenda, which is adopting standard conditions for special permits. Uh, I did a little digging back earlier in the summer and shared with Mr. Dwyer what I think is the last or most recent draft that was worked on with Ken Comia, uh, dated 2022. Yeah, 2022, excuse me. Uh, we haven't followed up on that because I know that we've got some bylaw amendments that are um, more urgent. So um, once those are set and ready for a special town meeting this fall, I'll be ready to press forward with Mr. Dwyer um, to get those formalized and have something for the board to look at. We'll get that ready so that we can approve um, that section uh, in conjunction with the planning board rules and regs, we'll do it all at once. If that's still acceptable to, to the board. That's fine. Yep. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the update on the DLTA grant regarding 40R smart growth. Uh, I sent a little bit of an update this afternoon to the steering committee. Uh, this, the Resident survey has been live since um, early August. I think August 1st, we opened it up. Um, to date, there have been 303 responses submitted. Uh, only about 63% of those are fully complete uh, surveys. Um, so there's a, a mixture of responses there. Um, but all in all, that's pretty good engagement. Uh, there is still one week of uh, time left uh, for folks to submit a response. Um, to my knowledge, um, we haven't had too many physical hard copies submitted. I have five um, to, to input. Uh, I'll be passing through town on Thursday, so I'll swing by town offices, library, and senior center to look for any more. Uh, and of course, I'll drop in early next week once it's officially closed, just to double check, make sure we've got all the hard copies ready. Um, we'll have a report, uh, a summarizing report that we'll draft up and circulate to the select or the steering committee and the planning board once the survey is closed. We'll also share uh, some of the raw data with the steering committee members if they want to do some uh, any type of more advanced statistical analysis, that kind of thing. Um, that will be, that'll conclude the first phase of engagement, and then we'll start to take note of the feedback from the survey, and that'll shape what we do next. Um, we're still anticipating uh, additional funding coming through uh, the planning assistance grants. Uh, we won't hear from them uh, from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. We won't hear from them until uh, probably the end of September at the earliest, more likely early mid-October. Um, so 
Our next steering committee meeting will be Monday the 16th, uh, and that's when we'll review uh, the survey responses uh, more in depth and in length. So that's the update for that agenda item. The next was um, bylaw amendment draft for special town meeting this fall. Um, I believe this one was regarding the ADU bylaw in response to the new housing bond bill. Um, I reviewed the first draft revisions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the only thought that I had uh, reviewing it again today was po possibly changing. There's a section where uh, new draft section 2624 ADU shall comply with setbacks per the appropriate zoning district. I was curious if the board would like to possibly revise that language to say something to the effect of shall comply with all dimensional requirements and reference section 4.2, uh, the dimensional requirement table in the bylaw. I've seen other communities just kind of do it that way. That's why. Right. Could you just send me that wording that you used, Kyle? Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll draft it up and send it along. That's fine. Right. Um, other than that, I didn't see many glaring omissions. I believe the draft covers everything that I've heard other communities um, raise concerns, particularly with uh, you know uh, Title Five and septic, and then the dimensions, dimension requirements. Um, and then uh, I believe Mr. Dwyer had suggested a, a clear definition of ADU, which I put into the, the an email late last week. I'll forward that along to you, Jim. As yeah, well. that'd be fine. Okay, so that's really I think it's a it's a pretty uh, straightforward amendment. So, uh, so if I could just digress for a minute for the benefit of the <laughs> the new people here. Uh, First of all, uh, Kyle is from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and we have a uh, annual contract with PVPC to provide technical assistance that we would have in-house if we had a town planner. Um, and accessory dwelling units, uh, this sprang, was sprung on us uh, with the, the budget, which came in late. Um, and one part of the budget says that uh, henceforth, uh, a an in-law apartment or uh, an accessory dwelling of some sort shall be allowed in every district that allows residential uses. Uh, and we previously had a bylaw that allowed accessory apartments by special permit, but only if they were attached to the principal dwelling. The new bylaw or the new state requirement says you can have an accessory dwelling attached or detached by right, subject to reasonable limitations. So that's what we're talking about, some reasonable limitations. And don't they also prohibit us from saying that one has to be owner-occupied? One has to be what? Owner-occupied. Yes, owner is no longer owner-occupied. Yeah. There was one thing uh, our town council sent around the bylaw that uh, they had been working on for the town of Munson, which I think I did share with everybody. But in the cover email, um, she mentioned that um, you could require minimal, minimum parking unless you're within a mile of a bus station, in which case you cannot require any parking for the accessory unit. So I did write back to town council and ask if they had a definition for bus station. Mm. Because we really, you know, the only bus station per se I can think of is the uh, the multimodal terminal at uh, Union Station in Springfield. Mm. Uh, yeah. We don't have a bus station, but we sure have a lot of bus stops. Well, there's a closer one in, in Holyoke. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Again, but not a thousand feet. But neither of the PBTA garages that serve Hampshire County are bus stations. They don't 
load or unload passengers there. Their garages, right. There's a garage in Northampton in the industrial park, and there's a garage at UMass on campus, but they are maintenance facilities. Uh, I don't have an answer. Um, I don't know if that affects the drafting of the bylaw. Um, I think we did require, uh, remind me, Jim, you did require some parking or adequate parking. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. The state required one park, one parking space per accessory unit. Yeah. Okay. We used to, so, we had a, we had a minimum of two prior to that. So. So I don't know if it requires a change. Uh, if, if, if it is determined that bus stop equals bus station, uh, then so be it. We just won't be able to enforce that part within a mile of route nine. That still leaves a lot of space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's something we're trying to get onto the fall town meeting warrant because the state change that Bill mentioned takes effect February 2025. Yes. Which is giving towns and cities an opportunity to make reasonable changes to their accessory unit bylaws if they have one so that they're not just free for all. Correct. And if if we don't change our bylaws, then we basically don't have any teeth to control what the state has mandated. Well, if, if we don't change our bylaw, the sections of the bylaw, I believe that are not appropriate, wouldn't be applicable. Right. Everything else still might, but that kind of makes it very confusing to apply it. Right. Yeah. So, okay. The the one um, change that we'll also need to take note of, I forgot to mention, but I believe I emailed it in response last week, is just um, um, table of uses uh, yeah. and just changing the accessory apartment or yeah. ADU line to yeah. um, by right or permitted yeah. in all zones except for excluding the industrial zone, I believe. Uh, so I'll follow up uh, first thing, Jim, and get that draft language to you. Okay. Um, Thank you. And Thank you. that was everything that's on the posted agenda um, in my uh, scheduled business section. But happy to hear what other draft bylaw amendments are being discussed and also curious about the state of the uh, battery energy storage uh, bylaw, if there's any news I haven't heard yet. We, we have heard nothing from the attorney general on that. I figured it's still kind of early. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the only thing, other things we got, we got two little sections of the, of the bylaw we're going to take out and they're referencing one reference is uh, the, uh, Greater development bylaw in a second, I think it's 1716, which is really just a housekeeping item. It's it's no longer applicable anyway, so you might as well take it out. Just, mm -hmm. just a little few, few little housekeeping things. Nothing that's really any kind of controversy or anything like that or any discussions. So if that's it, we will we'll, move on. We'll then have the senior housing one as well. So while we're talking oh, yeah. about about zoning let's st stay on zoning articles and just jump down to um to that it's uh it's on the agenda under 3c right um so i guess the question is uh the proposal is to enlarge the senior housing overlay district by adding the section between bounded uh north by rocky hill south by route nine east by 116 and west by north maple street and that's the only change that we'd make to the senior housing overlay for that section is that correct correct right now it's already yeah okay so i, I think that the planning board would be okay with i don't want to say sponsoring it but authorizing it to go to the warrant. Um, I don't think we will be talking to it specifically. I think we're going to put the burden on 
your clients, Tom, to uh, to make the case because, as you said, it it's more than just a generic zoning change. It's really a referendum on a proposed development. Right. I would have to recuse myself from any votes on that, as my uh, in laws would be negatively impact as they abut the BAB property. And we'll withhold judgment on negatively impacted at this point. <laughs> well, interesting. Yes, you you would probably be wise to abstain from voting on our uh, our recommendation. Yeah. You are free to vote at town meeting on yes. the article. Right. There, I'm just a citizen. Yeah. And so, Bill, just as a as a practical matter, um, so I provided that warrant article. I know it was going to get marked up for hearing at some point. Um, do you, how are we going to, how are we going to get that to the select board? Is it going to be from the planning board or is it something that I've got to get landowners to, I mean, just how are we going to do this from a technical level? It'll, it'll, it'll come from the planning board. Okay. Thank you. If it comes by petition, it just makes a whole lot of extra paperwork right right so and so when town meetings what the 24th of october october 24th okay so then we'll be you'll mark it up for hearing at some point probably the we're about, about to get to that wonderful thank you are we done talking about the AD adus yes because do we have any um do we have any say in septic uh, requirements on that the septic requirements this is the, the request of the dp of the dpw that it, it gets a bit complicated but they're requesting that it have its own septic system or its own sewer hookup if for some reason that is not acceptable by this by um the state or something any excess and uh, if it's if it's part of the main dwelling then it would tie into the septic system or the sewer system of the main dwelling if it is a separate dwelling building and then they're tough. requesting it have its own septic system or its uh -huh. own sewer hookup if that for some reason is not acceptable by the state then the law requires them to hook into the house system or the house sewer line but it needs to come back into the house to do that in mm. other words you can't tee into the septic tank you need to come into the house to tee into whatever sanitary system there is so it gets very complicated i mean people talking to the building inspector and the plumbing and the, and the board of health not the board of health but the electrical people may be under the idea that if they have a garage and they convert it to a dwelling unit that it's gonna be a piece of cake. Well, mm -hmm. it may be, but it's gonna be a mighty expensive piece of cake because they now need to comply with the latest building code. They can't just do it. They have to, if it's only got two by four walls and say uh, R13 insulation, no, it's gonna comply with the latest energy code and the latest building code because it's gonna be considered a new dwelling, a new building. No, so it I... gets, gets very expensive very quick. I, I'm fine with the DPW requesting a separate sewer connection. I don't think the DPW has any jurisdiction over septic. So I think that would be exclusively Board of Health jurisdiction. Yeah, probably. It, exactly, Bill. And uh, it gets to be a little bit more complicated. I thought that's what Jim was going to refer to. For example, if you have a four bedroom house with a 1500 gallon uh, septic disposal tank uh, and you have four people in the accessory apartment unattached, that probably would not be adequate. So I think the Board of Health has to have some recommendations as to what is going to be required for how many bedrooms and how many people. So uh, they're going to have to put out some kind of information. I mean, will you need a much bigger tank 
so that's that's the uh, it, it, it gets into it gets, so it gets into the size of the property the whole bit so i mean exactly right it's not a it's not a, it by no means is this a cookbook example then it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be complicated just leave it at that so it sounds like if i understand this correctly if the property is on is covered by the sewer line you could have two separate tie-ins Right. But, if it's a, but if it's a septic system, you've got to go back into the primary house and and because you can only have one septic system per property. Is that right? But but I don't know that. But Mark, no. if, if if your tank uh, septic tank is not adequate to handle the both right, properties. then you might have to increase your well, kind of. It, it has like, to do with the size of the property, right. the size of your septic tank. And the square footage of your leach field, it's not it's not like one answer for everything. It's yeah, like a title five, isn't leave, it? Leave it alone as it's very complicated. It's something that we don't have to worry that much about, but the board of health does. Okay. So the one one thing it's all well and good to say allowed by right. That's a zoning determination and only a zoning determination. Uh it's an amendment that's an amendment to 40 uh 40 A. Uh, the buildability of any one site, as Jim said, depends on building code, sanitary code, um, hey, sewer entry fee. Uh, there are a lot of things that are not addressed in the governor's budget item, and they're going to be um, they're going to be surprises, I think, for yeah going forward. I I think your point is 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 a good one. It's I hate to say it is politically motivated to make it appear that they were trying to overrule the zoning as being the the big inhibitor of uh, making uh, a housing unit affordable. But if you added it up, and I was talking to a building contractor, if you had to have a septic system, a septic system, and we allow we won't allow a trailer, it has to have a foundation. And the building code that Jim was alluding to, with all the new regulations, you're up to at least two hundred and fifty thousand for a nine hundred square foot dwelling. So it it is not going to be readily affordable for many people. Once again, so anyways, anyways. public hearing. We have two public hearings scheduled for October fifteenth. The, the two lot definitive subdivision and the special permit for the person on 139, I think it's Mont Warner Road for a home business. I would like to have the zoning amendments on the same public hearing because the town meeting is 1024. This would be a little over a week before town meeting. And if we want to save the first hearing of the month or the first meeting of the month for PVPC, that kind of puts it where it should be. As long as everybody else is okay with that. That sounds you good. Just check the, the 15th, you said? Yes. That's okay. the day after Indigenous Peoples Day, I believe. It'll be a busy public hearing then. But none of them are really, I mean, except for the accessory apartment, everything else is pretty straightforward. I don't see any controversial items on that. Well, the only exception I would make, and because I think it ties right in with what Kyle is doing for us, is if we were going to have a public hearing on zoning articles, we could do those on the first. That's why I'm bringing it up to the board. It'll also be less expensive to publish them for one public hearing. There's that. <laughs> but would it become such a long meeting that we would lose audience well it'll it'll be a meeting of, it'll be a public hearing meet public hearing meeting so it, it could be it could be a bit long don't i'm not going to make light of it will the be, public discussion is on the zoning articles will it be strictly uh zoom or will it be hybrid zoom What's the group's feeling on that one? One public meeting or two? 
I mean, do everything on the 15th or the first and the 15th. It Probably. seems it would be, it would give each issue its due diligence if we, if we split it up, you know, I get that it's easier to bang everything in one night, but. Probably two would be. So it would would give every issue it's 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 justice, but we would also have more time and we rarely have public comment at the um, public hearing on proposed zoning articles. Uh, when we do, it is sometimes useful. Um, and if we did the zoning articles on the first, we would have more time to make changes before the warrant actually had to be printed. If we're up it to the 15th, um, Ooh, I don't know when the last date to make any change in the printed warrant would be, but we'd be pushing it. Yeah, I, I don't believe we'd have time on the 15th to make any changes, you're right. And we're not keen on making amendments to zoning article on town meeting four because in the past, we've seen it as a disaster. Well, that's the my very minor, and I can't imagine any changes would be very that would be that minor on these articles. So, sounds like the feeling is two public two separate dates, zoning on October one, and leave the fifteenth as it is. Yes. That would yep. be my inclination. Yes. Okay. That's the way we'll do it then. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now we will are into the applicants for the replaced temporary position on the planning board. Um, anything else before, anything else before we get to that? Okay, we had um four applicants that qualified, Andrew Gnotic, Kishore Parmar, Anthony Fiden, and Matthew, is it Waldrip or Wald, Waldrip? Waldrip. Waldrip, okay. Yes, sir. Um, as far as I can tell from the application, they're very good people. They seem all highly qualified and eager, eager to be on and to serve. And I just have one general comment to make in that the planning board meets on the first and third Tuesday of every month, beginning at 6.30. And the meetings are typically over by about 9.30, but we, are, we have had meetings that have run until late at night, I'm talking 11, 11.30, and we would ask that any applicant be available for those meetings. If, you know, that's, that's about the only qualification. You're all registered voters, which is number one priority. And with that said, um, we'll let each talk to each person, give them a couple of minutes to talk about, tell about themselves and why they're interested and what their qualifications are, if any. And we'll start with, we'll go to alphabetical order. Jim, first. this, this, uh still mean we have a meeting with the select board tomorrow tomorrow we may we make it we're going to make a decision tonight and we're going to recommend that person tomorrow night to the select board and they're going to they are, they will appoint the, well, the way the process works we plan, the planning board will talk to each person brief interview make a decision and recommend one person to the select board tomorrow night and the select board is the appointing authority and you will be notified um, or you can watch the meeting tomorrow night or attend it at the select board. And then you go to town clerk and get sworn in. And lo and behold, you're a member of the planning board till next election. Yeah, well, let me just clarify a bit. It's, uh, it's not, it's a joint meeting with the select board. Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. It, it'll be all nine of us voting on it. That's what okay. the, I, so why vote tonight then? We should all wait. We should listen to what they have to say and question if they have any questions and then make the, the public statement or our vote 
coincide with the meeting with the select board because they may have input as well. So rather than have a vote now, that would almost seem like we're freezing the select board out. I think we'd be doing them a favor by giving them our view on who who best who seems best suited yes. to uh, step into the position. Yes, they're not. You know, there are two members of the select board here. They have seen copies of the uh, uh, seen copies of the expressions of interest. But um, I don't think they're going to tell. They're going to want to tell us who we should take. If I think we should, yeah. we should at least take a do a ranking. Yeah, I think they're looking for our recommendation. I yes. don't know when Mister when Mister De Devine passed away on a on the planning board years ago. <laughs> bless his soul. And we had to make it, we had the same similar situation. The select board looked to the planning board for recommendation. It was not a joint meeting. Let's, let's, let's decide between the nine of us. The select board was looking for who does the planning board recommend and why. And they accepted that recommendation and they appointed the person. If we try to talk this over tomorrow night with a select board, it's it, I can it, it's going to be a disaster with nine people trying to decide on this. And we, need, we, also, we need to have a recommendation. They also have a full agenda. We're second on the uh, agenda, but we're really realistically looking at ten minutes. Yes. Yeah, Mark. Two points of order. One, uh, you said let's go uh, alphabetically, so I think that would put Tony first. Uh, F comes before G in the. New Jersey alphabet, at least, where I was born. <laughs> and my second point was, um, would the board consider rank voting? I mean, I think we have a number of of qualified candidates, and I'm I'm not clear yet. You know, I'm going to listen to every everyone speak because I'm all over the board as you know who's, um, you know. So that might be it. Then if if we rank them number one gets four points number two, two gets three points number three gets two points and we each do a our first second third fourth choice then the points would i don't know i i don't have a great idea on how to do this one because i see all four people as being doing a good job, whichever one we pick. Unfortunately, yeah. three of the people are not going to make make it. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to spend a lot of time deciding on just how we're going to do this. I think each of us should listen to the four candidates, rank them ourselves, however we want to do it, and then decide however we want, who's, who's the best, who's number two, who's number three, however we want to call them. So I was only going by first name, Mark, when I said Andrew first. Oh, I see. Well, Anthony still comes before. Uh... No. No, no. Hey, Andrew. Andrew. no. Okay. <laughs> the close one. We're flexing our English muscles here. Yeah. All right. Mr. Ganadic. Hello. You're up. Uh, I guess you're up, Andrew. I'm up. Um, so uh, as a lifelong Hadley resident, um, I'm kind of looking at this as an opportunity to uh, to learn from from all, all of you all on the uh, planning board and kind of um, get a better understanding of, of how the town operates and really just use it as an opportunity to um, to learn and really just kind of hone some skills so I can be of service to the town um, either next election cycle or at a late at a future date um that that's kind of why i'm applying to it, the position um just so i can be more of more of service to the town okay that's it 
Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. Anthony? Good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, to speak with you. I, uh, I assume you've all seen my uh, letter of interest, so I won't go over that in detail other than to just uh, as a reminder that I, my background is as a journalist that um, my first part of my career was spent as a reporter and that process has, I went to a lot of meetings <laughs> um, of all types, including development and mostly in the Berkshires. And uh, it was a, a great learning process from a different pr perspective than as a board member, but um, it was a good learning process and it did learn about the, the way that uh, governance works and public meetings and open meetings worked and um, something that I really enjoyed is, and I, I've moved on to becoming a, uh, more into copywriting and marketing, um, but I still uh, have an interest in, in uh, local governance, especially um, here in town. Uh, I think it's, um, I think this board is, is tremendously important. I think right now we're at a, a period of great change um, in Hadley and, and in the state and in the region. And I think there's been a lot of pressure on local governments like us to um, to adapt to these changes. And, and that's something that then certainly the planning board uh, plays a critical role in that. And how are we going to meet the meet the moment in all of these changes, whether it's uh, economic development, housing, uh, environmental, um, all of these types of things that are um, that are coming at us and the decisions that we make are going to um are going to affect us in the near future and and for the next generation so uh i'd like to be a part of that i think it's a it's a, a period of critical change and i think i could be an asset um, because of my background i have as as many of you know i, I do have an interest in in local i try to uh, local government i try to participate in as many meetings as a citizen as i can and uh you also know that i'm I'm not, I don't mind sharing my viewpoints and, and, um, and I, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy debating and having those discussions. Um, I think that's a, uh, an important part of it. Um, the only thing I would add that may, uh, that I don't believe I put in the, the letter was that, um, there's a history here, but well, as some of you know, my dad was a, um, on the zoning board of appeals for decades. I don't know how many, um, probably over 30. And I, I did learn a lot from that experience and discussions with him on uh, on what it meant to manage our development, what it meant to uh, sometimes make difficult choices um, that you know some some of his friends didn't like, and but he was willing to make those decisions for the town. So uh, that was a that was a great learning process for me. And uh, lastly, I, I think this this town has a great history with the way that we have handled development going back. To the 60s with when the zoning laws were really developed and when there was there was a lot of pressure for change then from Amherst, which UMass was really taking off then in Northampton, which was undergoing a resurgence. We had to make some tough decisions then. And that's when the whole like the whole concept of the Route 9 commercial corridor really developed. And and we we managed to protect our agriculture and protect our residential um character for the rest of the town. And so I think we're at another period of great change and, and we have to uh, make some difficult decisions, decide how we're going to accommodate um, the changes that are coming at us while still protecting our town. The, the accessory, accessory apartment is a great example of that. That came at us from the budget and here it is. And now we've got to make a decision very quickly to try to accommodate that. And, you know, I'm, I don't like it. You probably don't like it either, but we have to, we, we just have to deal with it. So. Um, not an easy job, but if, if you think I can uh, be of help, I'm willing to try it. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Mr. Farmer. Hi, uh, so I've been a Hadley resident since I was six. Uh, my family's here, my brother's family's here. Um, we've been developing uh, commercial buildings in Hadley, outside of Hadley for, I don't know how long since we've been here. So I have an inner workings of um, working with the planning board, conservation committee, um, the, uh, what's it called, building inspector and fire and police. So um, I've worked with plenty of aspects of the town um, and know some of the workings of it, not all of it. Um, the other part of it is that I understand that, you know, there's a lot of knowledge that's 
contained within the board that needs to be passed down. And that's another reason why um, I wanted to join the board. Um, it's been, you know, being in Hadley has been really great. With the zoning and with the bylaws we've had, my family's been able to flourish and grow uh, business-wise. And that's why we set roots in Hadley. So um, that's why I feel like I should, uh, you know, that's why I want to join the planning board. Regarding qualifications, um, again, going back to, we have developed um, both residential and commercial. I have worked with numerous different departments in the town uh don't plan on moving at all um and that's about it that's all i could um go through right now other than to reiterate what um tony was saying hadley is changing business needs are changing um we see that with them all now resident needs are changing too we're seeing that with the accessory dwelling so things are going to be happening at another pace at a different pace than they were in the past so that's another reason. Okay, thank you. Mr. Weldrip. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. On this mic, great. It's a pleasure to meet you all. And uh, I enjoyed listening to the meeting and also the other applicants as well. Uh, my name is Matt Waldrip. I'm fairly new in town, I've been here about a year. Um, I was living, moved here from Cape Cod actually to be closer to my son who lives in Amherst. Um, I've got a pretty broad background in uh, uh, issues that your board deals with. I, I work for Eversource now, right down on uh, Russell Street here in Hadley, and I uh, manage the siting and permitting group. So basically, I get the permits from local boards and conservation commissions, Mass DEP. MEPA uh, to build substations, overhead lines, battery storage facilities. So I've got a lot of background in um, being on the other side of the table, working with those boards and reviewing permit applications, um, looking at different regulations. When I was living on the Cape, I served uh, three years on the Conservation Commission. I chaired the board for two of those years. So uh, familiar with how the meetings are run and understand that, um, like the previous applicants were saying, actually, that uh, you know, that institutional knowledge means a lot and also the precedent, you know, the decisions the board has made in the past and considering that moving forward as well. Um, I love Hadley. That's why I chose to move here. I just always, I went to school at Westfield State. So I spent a lot of time in Hadley and Amherst at UMass and uh, always admired how, you know, you had all the commercial development sort of in one spot, but then still preserved the agriculture. I thought that that was a really smart decision. And I think uh, just to echo what the other folks said, you know, um, as you know, I mean, you're gonna have to be strategic moving forward as well, you know, to continue to preserve the character of the town. And it's something I admire and wanted to be a part of and think I'd contribute positively to it just with my background and having been on a board and, uh, you know, working in zoning, licensing and permitting issues uh, like this. And I think, uh, yeah, just uh, interested to learn more. And if I did get this position, would want to learn from you all because, uh, you know, even though you have the technical understanding, I feel like I said, there's value in that precedent and understanding how the board operates. Cause there's a lot of, sometimes things can be interpreted in different ways and uh, making sure you're consistent in that interpretation is something I'd want to find more about and uh, be a part of. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Anybody have questions for the applicants? Mr. Hmm. Mr. Dunn, I'll let start with you. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask anybody or in general? Uh, yeah, no, I'm not I'm not really experienced with this uh, interviewing and all this. So I think I've seen everything on paper. I, I think I'll I will pass to others who have questions. Mr. Dwyer, do you have any questions or comments for anybody? Sure. Um, I, I'll, I'll ask for an answer from everybody. Um, this was a pretty typical meeting of the planning board. We um, tend to have two phases that we work with. One is permitting and one is planning. 
and we do try to keep one of our two monthly meetings on the planning side. Uh, not uh, sometimes a bit dry, but what did you all think of how the meeting went tonight? Is it is this the kind of stuff that you're interested in spending, you know, four or five hours a month of your life? meetings a year yeah uh, I found it um I, I find it thoroughly enjoyable um it's it's super dry and super concise um and I I just like I like that there's there's just rules and regulations to sort of address all the problems um so I mean that's that's how I look at it um yeah I, I I enjoy it. Mr. Feiden? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar. With, uh, we have uh, town meetings on our, our television a lot, so we're pretty familiar with how it works and how things go. Um, and it, uh, obviously, there's a learning curve. But there's, a, there's a lot to learn on this uh, for anybody that comes in um, to the planning board. And, um, you know, the meetings, they, they can go on, go on for a while. I, I I like quick meetings. I I think an hour. Once you get an hour, you know you try to get get things done. That's why I always try to be pre prepared um, before the meeting and try to have my, uh, my the points I want to make prepared in advance so I can um, get them out there and then and then uh, move things along. But you know when when there's a uh, longer meeting needed, that's what that's what you have to do. Mr. Primer. Yeah, I mean, being on the developer side, this this meeting seems pretty routine. And you know, I think one of the great things about the planning board is um, you you help the town out by enforcing the bylaws, but you also help the developers out and the builders out by guiding them through the bylaws and through the process. And that's what's needed. Um, you know, you you we had the Jersey Mike's folks today who aren't too familiar with all the bylaws in Hadley and they need to be educated. So we're not saying no, they just need to be educated and guided through it. Then it's the long-term planning of Hadley, which is needed. Um, so those things are coming hand to hand and it's, it's not an easy task to move this ship forward at any time. So I, I'm okay with it. Mr. Waldrip. Yeah, I mean, the meeting seemed uh, pretty status quo for me. I mean, pretty much in line with other meetings I've been to. I thought you got through stuff, you know, in a pretty compendious manner. I mean, I've been to some meetings where I've, this was back before the pandemic when it was in person, the meetings I chaired, and I thought my car was going to be on fire when I came out of the meeting. So <laughs> I know it has the potential to be, uh, you know, controversial. If you have a contested project or a controversial project, and there's always a risk for meetings going on for a long time. And having to be very careful what you say and especially with the decisions you make make sure all your t's are crossed and i's are dotted um i do think uh you know it's a balance you know making sure uh you know on the permitting side that you're being consistent and on the planning side that you might you know i think part of your role too if you have an applicant that may not understand something or um uh you know, even just a member a citizen asking you questions just to kind of serve as an educator as well. I've always found value in passing information along to folks just so they can better understand vision. And I think there's a bit of a cascading effect with that and it spreads outward, you know, kind of the mission of what the board wants to do and um, also being consistent with the decisions that you make. But to answer the initial questions, seemed like a pretty standard meeting. Anything else, Mr. Dwyer? Thinking. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll let you think. Mr. Mr. Zagran, do you have any questions or comments for anybody? Uh, no. Uh, but will we, should we have comments before we vote? Or Oh, well, uh, we're not ready to vote yet. Okay. No. Okay. no. We're, 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 still, we're still talking to them. Okay. Um, I just got kind of one general comment to make for everybody in that although it seems in many cases that uh, we're interpreting a lot of things. And in 
There are a few cases where we do, where we do interpret a little bit, but for the many, many cases that we come before us, the laws in front of us are pretty much hard and fast. Like I couldn't tell you how many times I have voted to approve something that I absolutely detested, but the law says it's a permitted use and a permitted zone and we do not have authority to refuse it. So I just want everybody to realize that, that just because you don't like something doesn't mean you can say no. Um, just a little philosophical facts there, if you would. Yeah. Just, why are anything in, else? I would say case in point to that, we did not really have a leg to refuse the, uh, the storage building, but boy, did we take a lot of <laughs> shrapnel from the uh, newspaper letters on that one yeah i mean it's a permitted use in a permitted zone and they requested and received no waivers or variances or otherwise yeah uh, everything was pretty much by the book there and it complied with zoning so we and can't there's other cases in town that, yeah. that are similar but that's the way it is Mr. Dwyer? Uh, no, I, I think, um, I, I guess I would just, um, just stress the importance. Uh, I think each of us has missed no more than one meeting in a year. So um, we're really, um, we're, we really build build our schedules around being here for this and we we have to we don't have staff presently i shouldn't say we have no staff we have uh uh kayla who is our land use coordinator who's helping with uh some of the clerical background work but um you know there's no one to uh there's no one sitting there making sure that everything works whether or not we show up or not so we have to show up the other part is that, and this is something that you just have to think about what your conflicts are. And I am sure you all have some. We are subject to the state conflict of interest rules. Um, and so um, we just have to be mindful that we also, um, handle multiple special permits and under, under state law a special permit requires a supermajority uh four affirmative votes from a five member board which means that in fairness to the applicants um at least four of us have to be there at every public hearing and preferably five and the applicant would really like that cushion to know that there's uh that that if someone votes no, they still have a chance of getting four affirmative votes. Um, so for some of you, the conflict will be family, uh, family relationships. Uh, for others, the contact will, con uh, conflict will be in businesses you're connected with. Um, so just picking on Eversource for a moment, I don't recall, I, the only thing that I recall that Eversource was actually in front of the planning board for was a proposed uh, solar field on South Maple Street. Um, other than that, I don't see a lot, but you're involved in other communities, I would imagine. Oh yeah, I mean, we service most of Western Mass other than the municipal utilities. I so, can't recall that solar farm. It may have been before my time. It, it was more than a year. It was a couple of years ago. Okay. Probably close to. Uh, Probably before my time. Yeah, it's five years ago. And and they ended up withdrawing ultimately, for whatever reason. Okay. The so. uh, other factor for you might be that to the extent EverSource has to do things in front of the Conservation Commission. Uh, at the very least, you would not be able to speak on their behalf at the Hadley Conservation Commission. As an applicant? 
as an applicant. Okay. You know, so, someone else in your office would have to carry the uh, carry the burden for for that applicant for that particular application. Understood. What you do with the Northampton Conservation Commission, we don't care about. Yep. Um, Understood. But I guess I have no no further comments either. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for us? I do have one question just in terms of uh, is there any commitment outside of these weekly meetings like site visits or um, other types of meetings that we would attend regularly? Only if you're appointed to another committee, like we have subcommittees that the planning board members are on, but they don't meet that often. As far as site visits, <clears throat> we avoid site visits for one pure reason, that if we go to a site visit and we see something that is not on the plans or somebody didn't apply or whatever you want to call it, then we could be potentially liable for something. So the planning board makes a habit of not making site visits as a planning board group. Some people, some people, the planning board may want to drive, but we always drive by sites. Obviously, you live in Hadley, you can't help but drive by stuff. But we don't make a site visit for the purpose of viewing what's going on at that site. Thank you. So I think the only position that uh, Mike Sarzinski held was he was the second planning board designee to the um, Chapter 40R Smart Growth Study Group, which uh, you heard a little bit about previously. But um, I don't know if, Mark, you feel you need a second planning board member there. Or if you did, maybe it would not be. So I have been practicing law for five years. No, about <laughs> six years when I was first elected to the planning board. And it took me about three years to really feel comfortable with how everything integrated. So there is a learning curve there. Um, we've been down it. Uh, we'll certainly help bring the next person along. And again, this is this is just an appointment until the annual town election in May of 2025, at which point the balance of the two-year term for Mike Sarzinski's term uh, it's a five-year term the remaining two years he retired uh after about two and a half years we're filling up to the next election and then there'll actually be two planning board seats on the ballot in uh in the spring one for a five-year term and one for a two-year term so uh you're not obligating yourself to even run for that if you uh if you don't like it, but and I will just to back up one of the things that you said. I came on here uh, as a you know experienced licensed architect, but I had not attended any uh, of the meetings, and uh, the other board members have been very generous with you know when an issue comes up. They'll discuss it, you know, in the open meeting for my benefit. Uh, Doc is very good at that, so, you know, giving me the history and and uh, Bill and Jim as well. So, uh, you know, we, we we I would like to think that you would expect us to be a supportive teaching colleagues. And, and just for everybody's information, I think most of you realize this, but although Mr. Dwyer was just speaking, he's the third senior, third, he's the number three on the seniority list for the planning board, and he only has 36 years or 37 years of uh, being on the planning board. So, and the only reason I am third in seniority is that the guy who was third in seniority died in office. So and I'm looking forward to being the fourth instead of the fifth. <laughs> right now you're number four. 
Oh, okay. Anyways, all right. Any other comments or questions for anybody? Hearing none. Um, who would like to, rather than put anybody on the spot, who would like to speak first on who they might think would be most their number one choice? Well, uh, is that was that what we're doing? We're not gonna not gonna do ranked. Well, you, I find them all. I mean, I don't think we would be, you know, hurt by any one of the four. Absolutely agree with that. Um, but we've got to choose somehow. So you can rank them any way you want of the four. And I was just thinking if we rank them, we wouldn't have to have a second. Like if, if all of us voted for a different one, then we'd have to have a second round of voting. But okay. if we do the rank, it's more likely that we wouldn't have to do a second. Okay. That sounds like a reasonable idea. One being number one and highest, and four yeah. being lowest. Yeah. How would you rank them, Mr. Dunn? Uh, well, I kind of see them on paper as two tiers, two who bring applicable or, or very applicable um, experience, and two that bring uh, less career training. But that's not to say that that doesn't bring value. So. I, I'm having a hard time splitting them. So I was, and then there's those who have like, you know, Andrew's been here for a year. You know, he's shown his commitment and, and interest. So I'm torn. Um, if I have to vote first, I will. Uh, oh, I, you know, I really like the qualifications. Why don't you hem and haw for a few more minutes while I yeah. try to work out a matrix I can. Uh, okay. Okay. I, I really like the qualifications of, uh, of Matt, you know, and, you know, his, his, uh, the experience he brings and the, uh, I think he's done some environmental stuff and yet he's also, you know, but he's got that red flag of battery storage. Whoop, whoop. So, <laughs> um, uh, I guess I just, Throw my darts, um, let, 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 and let, I will. I will say, wait, wait, wait. Bill is working up a bit of a matrix. Okay. So All before right. you stick your foot in your mouth, yeah, <laughs> and say something you may want want to get the little oh. matrix. Okay. So we can do a quick ranking. So what I'm thinking about is. Uh, So if you I just rank them to some of the rank choice voting things, but I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. What I'm yeah. thinking of is the names of the candidates and then our initials across the top. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to. Um, so then if they get first, second, third and fourth, then the person with the lowest score is the highest choice. Correct. If that makes any sense. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was. That's that's the matrix I was going to use, Bill. Okay. As opposed to some big complex matrix of various qualifications, that I that just gets too complicated. Something like this. So if that's the case, Mr. Mark Dunn, how would you rank them? I am ready to go, and I apologize to everyone. This is all based on a snapshot. Please don't take it personally. I'm gonna go and uh, with. Uh, I'm going to put Matt as one based on his experience, and then I'm going to go with Kishore as number two, and uh, Andrew as number three. And I'm sorry, Tony, I just, you're all good. I just had to draw a line somewhere, so I put Tony as number four. Okay. Mr. Dwyer, we'll just go in alphabetical order. Okay. Uh, I will concur that I like uh, Mr. Waldrop's range of experience. Uh, you know, he's fam familiar with open meeting laws. Um, 
I think I would put Andrew second, um, Keyshore third, and if I could do just a tie for third, I would put Keyshore and Tony at third, but I guess I have to put Tony at four. Okay. This one's Mark, Bill, Jim, Bill Z. Okay. I would rank, um, well, mine would be Keyshore as number one. Um, Andrew was number two. Tony is number three, Anthony, and Matthew was number four. And again, this the, these are you gentlemen all impressed us. So don't don't take this as anything personal, please. This is only for the next election. Joel, what is your ranking? Okay, uh, part of this is uh, certainly they're all well qualified. I think in I applaud them for throwing their hat in the ring, but. Uh, some of this is a little personal with me. I, I kind of grew up with a fighting, fighting Kevitz uh, group of uh, four families, and uh, I had the utmost respect for their hard work and ability. And yeah, I worked with them, I played sports with them, and did a lot of things with them. So I would rank Tony up there, number one. And uh, Waltrip number two, Keyshore number three, and Ganotic number four. Okay. Seven, 11, two, three, six, nine, four, eight, 12, one, two, four, eight. So as you can see, there was no clear, this one's the best and this, they're just all very even. Okay, the totals work out. Matthew Weldrip with eight, Kishore Parmar with nine, Andrew Gnotic with 11, and Anthony Fiden with 12. So the recommendation of the board would be Matthew Weldrip. And all very, very close. And you all did a good job. Please. If we had a budget, I'd give a gift certificate to eat, all of you. <laughs> a big one for the one who stuck with us. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Looking forward to being number five, I guess, right? Low on the chain. Yeah. <laughs> Get to start somewhere, right? <laughs> and please. Uh, the other three, May is just around the corner. Will you be able to attend the select board meeting at six o'clock tomorrow night? Yes, I'll be there. Okay, you can go by Zoom or it's, it's all, it's a hybrid meeting, both Zoom and live. It's at the senior center. Thank Your you. Your choice. The uh, web, the Zoom address is on the uh, uh, town website. There are select one's agenda. Thank you. Um, okay. So it, it's in the, uh, the planning board is separately posted for uh, the meeting and it's in our agenda as well. Okay. I have nothing else. Hopefully with uh, Kyle getting me the information on the ADUs, I'll be able to revise that and get that out within the next uh, week or so to everybody so they can review it again. Because I have on that particular thing, I have, uh, let me see, where is it? We have the amendment to, with the, what you call it? Redo section 26, which is the accessory apartments to add a section to the definition definition section, um, define administrative review, because wait, we call it administrative review, but we don't define administrative review in anything but the uh, solar bylaw. And I don't think we wanna make it that complex. I'm trying to make an amended 
at their definition um, in the in the definition section that we can refer to. Amend section 3.1 table, um, changing accessory apartments to accessory dwelling unit and the zones that it's permitted in for what Kyle said. And also amend section 4.1, um, which is in the general section. And that requires some definition too, because right now that that has a little bit of a requirement on accessory dwelling. And so I'm trying to correct that as well. It says it basically is defining a dwelling or dwelling or structure. And without getting into the whole definition section with the definition here, making it a mess, we've got to make a couple word changes in that thing. So total, how many articles do you see? Uh, this is going to be, I, I would expect to make the accessory and dwelling unit and all of these that I just said, one article. I think so, yeah. Otherwise, it's going to, because if, if something passes and something doesn't, we're going to have a, we're going to have a disaster. <laughs> Whereas everything passes or nothing. And then we're going to have two other articles, two other zone amends, which are the minor, um, basically, uh, housekeeping stuff. Plus the senior housing overlay. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, one's a senior housing overlay. I'm sorry. And one is to delete section 1716. So, yeah, the, the housing overlay is not, an, is not a housekeeping. You're right. So, the three zoning amendments okay. senior housing, delete 17.16, and amend the accessory dwelling unit. Okay, three articles. Correct. I think that's what we have reserved. I believe so. And that's enough for town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I forgot to put it on the agenda, we can talk about it at the next meeting, perhaps. Uh, somebody did actually write about the um, storage facility and implied that they'd like an answer so I don't like, uh, they wrote an email to town hall um, or to the select board office. Um, I'm happy to prepare an answer, um, basically along the lines we've discussed. It was an allowed use in the district. Um, we had no basis for rejecting it. But um, I think we just, we can put that off to discuss about whether we want to, I, I don't want to go back and forth with Gazette letters to the editor, but when we have a direct request yeah. to a town office for a reply. I like to respect that. If, if you want to make a reply bill, it's a permitted use in a permitted zone. The abutters were notified, including mass uh, bike path people. And nobody replied and nobody came to the public hearing to say a word about it. And the other the other comment that not be many careful, people... be careful, guys. You're, you're discussing something yeah. not on your agenda. Yeah, okay. I'm not, we're, we're not taking any action on it. it it's actually under the uh, heading of future discussion topics. Okay. And so I, uh, can you tell me when that email got to town hall? Because I haven't seen it and I'm really curious. Oh, I'll forward it to you after we sign off. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, actually, maybe I can even tell you. About a week ago. Uh, it was shortly after our last meeting. Okay. All right. I want to look at it. Uh, uh, August 23rd. Okay. If you could forward it to me, Bill, I'd appreciate it. Will do. Thank you. And we can talk about it at our next meeting. Okay. All right. Okay, I have nothing else. Oh, wait a minute, end of September. Um, yes, motion to uh, pay the planning board the uh, third quarter stipend. So moved. Yeah, good. Motion a second, any discussion? All in favor, roll call. Don I. Don I, yes. Dwyer I. Maximoski I. Zagrodnik I. 
motion passes four to zero. Thank you. All righty. So now, I'll just remember to put this on the agenda to discuss at uh, our next meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Oh. Aye. Oh, oh, well, you want to do, a, do you want a roll call vote for that too? Bill? Uh, what if it's unanimous? Aye. Uh, <laughs> all right. Does anyone object? <laughs> <laughs> Media's history. Thank